Greetings from Research and More. This video continues from part 1 video on what is research gap. It is now extended to include how different types of research gap and limitations of the study and directions for future research can also lead to identification of research gaps. This video is structured into two sections. Section 1 explains the different types of research gap. Section 2 illustrates how research gaps can be derived from limitations of study and directions for future research. Let's go. There may be different terms used to identify different types of research gaps, but they still share similar intents and purposes. In this video, the terminology used by Miles 2017 is adopted. The first type of gap is the evidence gap, followed by knowledge gap or knowledge void. The third gap is the practical knowledge gap. Methodology gap comes fourth. And the fifth is empirical gap. Next is the theoretical gap and finally the population or sampling gap. Let's follow further explanations of each gap. Evidence gap arises if a new research finding contradicts widely accepted conclusions. This involves contradictions in the findings of prior research. Such gap occurs if results from studies allow for conclusions in their own right but are contradictory when examined from a more abstract point of view. Contradictory evidence are identified by analysing each research stream. Subsequently, results from this analysis need to be synthesised in order to reveal any contradictory evidence. Knowledge gap or knowledge void is one of the most common gaps in prior research. There are two settings where a knowledge gap might occur. The first being, knowledge may not exist in the actual field to theories and literature from related research domains. And secondly, it could be due to results of a study being different from what was expected. A practical knowledge gap or action knowledge gap conflict arises when the actual behaviour of professionals is different from their advocated behaviour. However, such discrepancy can motivate new research in this direction. In such a case, research could seek to determine the scope of the conflict and uncover the reasons for its existence. Methodological gap deals with the conflict that occurs due to the influence of methodology on research results. This gap addresses the conflicts with the research methods in prior studies and offers a new line of research that is divergent from those research methods. In any case, it might be useful to vary research methods especially if certain research topics have been mainly explored using a singular or common method. Empirical gap deals with the research findings or propositions need to be evaluated and empirically verified. For example, the empirical gap often addresses conflicts that no study to date has directly attempted to evaluate a subject or topic from an empirical approach. Theoretical gap is another common choice among researchers in examining prior research. It deals with the gaps in theory with prior research. For example, if one phenomenon is being explained through various theoretical models, there might be a theoretical conflict. Researchers could examine whether one of those theories is superior in terms of its explanatory capability. In research, there are always underserved populations that have been under-researched, making population or sampling gap popular among researchers. 
Some examples of this type of gap are gender, race or ethnicity, age and other types of demography. By identifying research gaps and integrating them into the research problem, a researcher has a valid reason to proceed with the study. A well-identified research gap makes a particular study unique. It also offers perspective to develop research questions. Apart from a researcher identifying research gaps in another researcher's study to use in his research, he should also share the limitations of his study and provide directions for future research in his current work. Every research would face some limitations which is best known by the researcher himself. Such limitations can be communicated as implications for future research, thereby allowing the development of relevant future knowledge or theories. Directions for future research is one of the great ways to identify research gaps. A researcher typically builds his research gaps from the literature review and subsequently recommends possible gaps for future researchers from the limitation of his study and directions for future research. In this illustration, researcher A was looking into studying brain and brain equity. His literature review revealed that past studies generally agree on attributes to brain equity at conceptual level. However, those studies have not extensively considered other areas beyond the conceptual level such as the impact of tangible and intangible attributes on brain equity. In order to fill this gap, he decided to measure brain equity along some criteria and attributes and to examine the impact of brain equity on its preferences. He used a longitudinal study of nine brands of top market share soft drinks on student sample. The results showed a strong relationship between brand equity and each preference measure considered in his research. Results from researcher A's study now becomes existing knowledge. Based on his findings and limitations, researcher A then suggested areas future researchers can consider studying. For example, since low involvement products were considered for his study, findings from his study should be viewed with care, implying that future researchers may focus on high involvement products. For future research, he also recommends incorporating some levels of demography of the target market for all brands under study in order to be able to effectively analyze drivers of brand equity for specific demography. Finally, he recommended future researchers to critically examine how intangible attributes add value to a branding order to get such brands to last longer than they normally would. Apart from those mentions, other options for research design may also be explored to identify research gaps. In conclusion, identifying research gaps in the scholarly works of other researchers plays a very important role in justifying the reason for which a particular research is being done. It helps to justify why a particular subject area needs to be studied and also helps to prevent researchers from inventing the wheel. If you find this video useful, please subscribe and comment so that more similar videos can be created.